Hi, my name's Emma and let's talk spooky stuff. <laughs> Looking for a fresh ghostly horror with all the satisfying curse tropes just in a new atmosphere? Well, look no further. Moloch has you covered and it hits Shudder this week. Moloch has the usual elements, but done right. Creepy children, curses, and the paranormal twisted into a story that is explained in detail. This is the first feature from Nico van den Brink, who is known for his successful horror shorts, Sweet Tooth and The Burden. In 2017, it was announced that James Wan was going to produce an adaptation of Sweet Tooth after the short film had just received high praise at the Fantasia International Film Festival in the same year. But more on this later. Because I'm dying to talk about Moloch. This 2022 horror film from Netherlands explores the dark history of a small village which resides near the edge of a peat bog in the north of the country. Here we follow our protagonist Beatrix who has suffered major loss and trauma in her life. She resides here in her hometown living with her parents and her young daughter Hannah. Unfortunately her mother has become sick with a mysterious illness and she must stay brave for a family in a town where she feels unwelcome. Although the film synopsis will tell you this is the story about unraveling a mystery. What I enjoyed the most about this film was the different approach in putting the concept of the law first. We as the viewer have a front row seat to understanding the tale of Fika and in turn learning about Moloch, a god of unspeakable sacrifice. The movie starts as an exciting story about a historical discovery in the peat bog, which lures in a team of outsiders, including one man who becomes very close to the protagonist. He's from the UK and this part kind of threw me off, but the film is in both languages. It's in Dutch and in English in parts. Are you guys digging for treasure? Something like that. That is incredible. But this makes it even more of an interesting window to the outsider, understanding through the visitor's eyes that the people in this town take what he sees as a tale of the boogeyman to scare children away very seriously. Do you take it seriously? No. Although it's translated in subtitles, the visitor to this area never really understands the full gravity of what is being said in Dutch. Obviously us as the viewer, we get to see both sides. The film runs for one hour and 39 minutes and let me tell you, it does not waste any time. There's a lot of aspects and we hit the ground running with no dead air. Every scene, every conversation, every pause in this film is purposeful. Creating the foundations for a charismatic family that you'll instantly care for, therefore will be concerned about because they're in real danger. And of course, like anything in the Western European countryside, you can expect a stunning landscape to top it all off. But a lot of this film does take place at night. I mean, it is a horror, but it definitely gets into those dark, creepy crevices. So I would recommend a night viewing for the full effect. But besides the cozy, deep blues of the night, the film also has a lot of warm yellows that serve as contrast, but also give the film a homely feeling, which complements the small town. But it was the camera moves that gave this film some cohesive stylization. New scenes or establishing exterior shots are paired with a dolly, giving you a feeling like you're slowly creeping towards the story or the focus for each scene. You truly feel like a fly in the wall or an outsider peering into these situations, excited to discover the mystery behind it. The music also matches the gentle atmosphere with, with soft, dreamy, ethereal ambient music that makes the brutality of the film melt away and leaves it to feel feel like a more emotional gut punch about the trauma of this family. Although the stylization in camera work and sound present the emotional side of the film, this is a horror. And like I said before, there's a lot of different aspects to get through. The film isn't afraid of an entity reveal or a bloodbath. This film has some intense scenes. But because we're given a detailed history, for me, these scary moments strangely played out more satisfying. Tying the story together for the viewer and allowing them to understand the story visually, not just by word of mouth. Although I feel like this film was intended to be a mystery horror with a thrilling search into the roots of folklore, it becomes more of an interesting documentation of such events, a solemn story that is successful in chronicling a tale of pure darkness. The film knows its purpose and doesn't extend its reach, 
Only using elements and foreshadowing, it intends to fully explain to the audience. It's a solid folk horror with a charming cast that will leave you squirming in unexpected ways. There was moments I had to look away. It was just a very surprising ride, but it is just so simple and compact. It's so nice to watch something that isn't trying to oversell you or trying to reach past its core story. It really develops the backstory and the characters properly without trying to add too much to go over the top and really, I guess, shock the audience. Instead, it plays out its own mystery perfectly and yeah, gives it to you in a neat box. What was it? A very old woman, hundreds of years. Has been cut. Just like the others. So if you're looking for something seriously satisfying to watch, this one premieres on the 21st of July on Shudder. I give this one a personal score of 7, an originality score. As I said, it's elements we know, but it's in kind of like a different atmosphere. Uh, but it does it so well, but I still think for originality it's probably a 6, and for scare I'm going to give it a 6 as well. Honestly, the whole backstory and the curse is so interesting that I found my attention was more on how that was going to develop than what happened to the characters, even though they are very likeable. It makes me excited about what's next for this horror-focused director, and as mentioned earlier in the video, the director's short Sweet Tooth was said to be picked up by New Line, with James Wan producing it. But it's been five years, and there's been no updates on production. Although, it seems like there is another plan in motion. The Burden, which is his other short film that was quite well received, this one got 11 wins and 8 nominations during the festival rounds, this one has just been announced to be made into a feature. So keep your eyes peeled because this is only the start for this emerging Dutch director. I'm really excited. If this is the first film out the gate, I can't wait to see what's next. Let me know if you're checking this one out this week and if you're interested or have you already seen it. I know it's already premiered at some film festivals, so I'm very interested to hear what you have to say. But if you are into folk horror, especially folk horror with curses, definitely check this one out. It is a solid watch. I hope you really enjoy it. My name's Emma. I do two videos every single week talking about horror movies and thrillers and giving you a lot of recommendations without spoiling anything. Although sometimes we do deep dives in tier lists, so it's just all about horror discussion here. I'm also on TikTok now if you want to follow me for weekly picks and just to catch up with what I'm doing. And of course, I'm always on Instagram. So I'll talk to you all very soon. Thank you so much for being here. Stay safe and stay spooky. Bye, friends.